Where am I going? This is wrong. <laughs> this is totally wrong. Just turned into oncoming traffic, no biggie. It's been two weeks since I've ridden my bike, which is two weeks too many. I've been sick for the past couple weeks and now I relocated from Taiwan to Thailand. So I'm going to get Wallace out of this box, build him up, and go for my first ride in Thailand and my first ride on the left-hand side of the road. By the way, shout out to our channel sponsor, Wabi Cycles, because without them, it would be very difficult for me to even be here in Thailand. Also, they make really sweet, lightweight bikes, and I can only have one bike as I travel. And if I could have any bike, I'm really appreciative that it could be a nice riding Wabi. So if you're interested in getting a Wabi yourself, feel free to check them out. Linked at the top of the description. Bikes are pretty durable, so it's probably fine, but it's, you can never be too sure with airlines. And it's always a nerve wracking experience on boxing it to make sure that none of the tubes are dented or none of the wheels are out of true. The top tube is one of the more nerve-wracking parts to one. The top tube is always one of the more nerve-wracking parts to unbox because it is one of the thinner tubes on the bike. But everything Looks to be good so far. No dents. Because Taipei is always raining this time of year, and because I had nowhere to wash my bike, I've let my bike get a bit too dirty for my liking. It's been about three months since I've cleaned it. Put it in perspective, this chain was gold at some point. Now I need to give Wallace some well-deserved TLC. <laughs> This poor chain. It used to be gold. Whenever I work on bikes, it always takes way longer than I estimate. It was really silly of me to think that I'd clean my bike in 30 minutes. Well, after three months of road grit accumulating and layering on each other. I've been cleaning my bike for about four hours now just with a rag, hot water, and dish soap because that's what I got here. Got some new drivetrain goodies for Wallace. Firstly, I got this 49 tooth ARN chain ring. It's the super hipster OG one that was made in Massachusetts. Now they're made in California. I don't know why, because California is terrible for business. But this is my favorite chain ring. Super cool, well machined, made in the USA, and really long lasting. My brother has one of these, he's been riding it for something like eight years now, and it's still going strong. Honestly though, the stock Andel chain ring is perfectly fine, really round, runs smoothly, but this just looks so much cooler. Because of the new chain ring, I'm also going to be using a new chain. This is an Izumi chain. Black outer links with silver inner links should look really dope. Had to get a new chain because the stock drivetrain on Wobbies are 3 seconds inch, so the chain would not fit on my new Fancy Pants 1 8 inch chain ring. So, new chain. And also a 19 tooth Wobby Cog for crushing the mountains, or at least attempting to. Pro tip, if you have an ARN chain ring and you want extra fixie points, make sure the logo is legible when the crank arm is at three o'clock. Can somebody please tell me why the female side of standard chain ring bolts doesn't use the standard Allen keys? You know, like every single other bolt on the bike. Instead, you need this stupid special proprietary tool, or in my case, a butter knife, and it takes five times as long to do and undo chain ring bolts. This is stupid! Just because it doesn't use an Allen key. Omnium ones do, which is nice. That should be standard on every single bike. 
Why is it not? Please tell me in the comments. The chain ring is finally on and thankfully I won't have to monkey around with stupid chain ring bolts again until I have the disposable income to upgrade to black 75s. Functionally, this chain ring is no different, but it just looks so cool, I'm glad that I spent $70 on it. <laughs> bike is ready to go. The rain has stopped for the time being. Now it's time for me to do my first ride on the left-hand side of the road. The first time that I went somewhere where they drove on the left-hand side of the road was Japan back in May. And when I got picked up from the airport, I was just holding the dash, just screaming and thinking that we're going to drive into oncoming traffic at every turn. I've been easing myself into the left-hand side of the road thing. I've just been walking around Thailand, practicing crossing the street, even so I could reprogram my brain that I've been taught and that I've been practicing my entire life to look left and then look right and then cross the street. But now it's completely backwards. It's right then left, stay on the left side of the road. And then here in Thailand, parking is pretty much free game. And they do things like this, which really confuses me. And I think that the roads are just like back home. I'm just gonna take it slow, try not to freak out. I'm riding brakelets today, which does not help, but we'll see how this goes. if this goes anywhere, but I'm going. Well, I messed up. You turn. Whoa, I'm through. Oh. Those are some sketchy storm drains. Perfect size for your wheel. Let's see if the roads get a bit quieter down here. Back there, I so, so very badly wanted to just hang in the right lane. Caught myself. Side out of habit. Gotta kill that. Or it's gonna kill me. Oh, a bike lane. 
That really helps me out with knowing what side to be on. I wonder what that says. Probably not important. Right. And last. Oh, I did it. This is super confusing. Because there's a bike lane here, and it goes this direction. And then there's a bike lane right next to it, which goes this direction. And then all of these cars now, and scooters, want to be all inclusive here. They go this direction. And then if you look over there, on the other side of the river, there's traffic going both directions. Very confusing for a stupid American such as myself. This bike trail is a nice surprise because I had no idea that Thailand was even remotely bike friendly. But now that I'm on it, it's much less mentally taxing than riding in the winding roads with roads going every which way. It feels more natural to just look right and then left. I think I'm up this way. And as you saw, I made a wrong left turn again. I think I'm lost. That's an open storm drain, hello. My parents are from the Philippines. Yeah, but I'm born in the US. Okay, okay. enjoy your trip. All right, thank you. Oh, All right, I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> All right, bye bye. People here are so friendly. Just want to chat. Always with big smiles on their faces. I like it. A man told me that King Kong is on the lake. Gotta check that out. So it turns out August in Thailand might be too hot to do fixed gear climbing in pants. Might have to rethink my wardrobe on this one. I'm not in California anymore. I originally intended to go check out a pretty cool bike shop that looks like they have a lot of track stuff. Even saw a few NJS bikes peeking through. So I'm hoping that I can at least get some nitto parts that I'm looking for. But that's gonna have to wait for another vlog because truth be told, I'm tired and I wanna go home. It's 4.30 right now. So hopefully at this rate, I can avoid rush hour. Pro tip, gator skins, not exactly meant for mud. Doing my darndest to not eat it right now. Where am I going? This is wrong. <laughs> this is totally wrong. Just turn into oncoming traffic, no biggie. Storm drains in Thailand are like the banana peels in Mario Kart. My first ride on the left-hand side of the road. Could have gone better, but definitely could have gone worse. I'm still alive, so... I'll count that as a plus. Definitely accidentally salmoned and rode against traffic more than once. I'm finding it really difficult to retrain myself, what I've been practicing and what's become automatic for my entire life to look left and then to look right to stay on the right side of the road on a bike. But here everything is flip-flopped and what's safe back home is totally dangerous here and vice versa. I'll keep riding so let me know in the comments if you want to see more vlogs just like this one. Of course I'll get a windscreen from my GoPro so my videos aren't howling into your ears. And in the next vlog I'll check out the bike shop Velo Style and maybe I can get some Nitto components there. I found that while I really do like risers I do want to go back to drops looking for some wide 48 centimeter Nitto noodles for balance of the leverage that I like getting from risers but also wrapped in a more comfortable and versatile drop bar package. But speaking of bikes that come in a comfortable and versatile package, 
Our channel sponsor, Wabi Cycles, is the epitome of what makes cycling fun. Every one of Wabi's design choices are meticulously made to give the purest ride quality for the money. And Wabi executes those choices perfectly, handmade by master craftsmen in Taiwan and a friendly bike shop in Denver, Colorado. This amounts to efficient, elegant, and timeless bikes that you can get from a passionate group of fellow cyclists. Wabi's relentless attention to detail results in Wallace, my 58 centimeter Wabi special, weighing in at 17 and a half pounds or 7.97 kilograms, and I say both measurements because Wabi does indeed ship internationally. It results in the best riding experience that I've ever had with a snappy and lively ride quality that only top tier steel can bring. That pure fun makes it easy for me to ride Wallace, my Wabi special, as my only bike as I travel throughout Asia. So if you're looking for a bike that could very well put an end to your search for the perfect bike, consider checking out our channel sponsor Wabi Cycles linked at the top of the description, because honestly, it's the closest thing that I've ridden to the perfect bike. I just want some more fixy points, is all. If you haven't ridden your bike yet today, stop watching me right now because life is short, but don't make it shorter. So ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.